This is the perfect RIA In case you didn't know Bringing you all the strategies To help your business grow Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? Sit back and listen in While you feel the beat, yeah! Cash flow is the heartbeat of retirement and the primary concern of our retirees. Unfortunately, most advisors don't have a way to clearly articulate or show retirement income that clients can understand. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Perfect RIA Podcast. I am your co-host and co-founder, Matthew Jarvis, and with me, as usual, the man, the myth, the legend, Micah Shalansky. Micah, how are you today, my friend? Jarvis, it is another day in paradise. How can I possibly complain? And we get to talk about something I'm pretty passionate about, not only value adds, but fun retirement income stuff. So I am super excited to be here. But before we get to that, how are you enjoying your new house? Uh, loving it. So we uh, we moved down here to Las Vegas uh, a few months ago and uh, settling in. So it's a real nice place. I enjoy the, the desert and the sunshine. I see that uh, you're in your office. You must be doing mini surge this week or this week that we're recording. I am. I am. We're doing mini surge, which is fantastic. So I got a little bit of stuff. We record these on a Monday morning. So I had a little bit of stuff to, to game with the, the team today. And then I'm going to be kicked over. I got a couple days of mini surge and just getting super stoked about it. Right. Sometimes I'm like, oh, man, I got a surge coming up and I got to get myself psyched up. But as soon as I get looking at the client stuff, as soon as I start going through it and saying, holy crap, we're going to deliver so much value. And in fact, that's actually kind of where this came from today. I have a client that's coming up to retire and they are concerned because it's a new client. They don't know where their income's coming from. And I'm sitting there and I'm outlining and crafting this plan in our one page plan and our value adds that we're going to do and be like, I'm just getting so excited because I have the history, Jarvis, as do you, of working with hundreds of clients and knowing that this is not only going to add value to them, this is going to give them the confidence and security they need to move into retirement and to make that big change, which sometimes we can underestimate that stress that's there, right? Because again, we deal with this all the time and it's someone else retiring. It's not us retiring. So someone else's pain is, is infinitely easier to deal with, right? But this is something that's near and dear to all of our hearts as advisors. Boy, there's so many pieces to pick out of that, Micah. One I want to pick out is that with whether it's a mini surge or a, a regular surge or just, just plain surge as we call it, one of the things that are required for that to be successful is that your systems be incredibly streamlined. So if for yes. each client or prospect you're doing a 472 financial plan, you'll never be able to get them all seen during that time frame. So this is where we come back to one page value add, sometimes a two page value add maybe, but we've got to boil these things down so that they're a super clear and concise uh, way for two reasons. One, just efficiency wise, we have to be efficient for our offices to be able to handle surge. But the second, and you mentioned this client, right? They're staring down the barrel of retirement. They're staring down the barrel of, I'm going to this great unknown. Um, and will I run out of money? And if we give them a 50 page or 400 page financial plan, it creates a lot of confusion and it makes it worse, not better. Yeah, so a lot of the stuff that we like to give is in simple terms, right? For example, and, and I know most of our advisors listen to this, but this is such a key thing because I was chatting with another advisor um, and I heard, or I heard him talk about how he presents things to clients and Jarvis, kind of a rookie move. He was talking about everything in gross numbers, not in net numbers, mm -hmm. right? It was mm -hmm. talking about, and so the client has to figure out to do the math or worse yet, the client doesn't know has to do the math. And now all of a sudden there's going to be a 30% delta uh, in, in what the client thought they were going to get versus what they're taking home. So these are one of the things that we have to be hyper, hyper clear to clients. What do these numbers mean? And as often as I possibly can, I am talking to my clients in net numbers. And whenever they talk to me about that, I always remind them, says, hey, great news. It's my job to worry about taxes and inflation. So I'm going to make sure I'm taking care of that on the back end. Whenever you and I are talking, we're going to be talking about net numbers. And Jarvis, that's how much money shows up in your bank account. I love that, Mike. On my one-page financial plans for prospects or clients, right, one of our very – after we state restate their goals, always number one, we say, hey, when you're retired and all your income is turned on, you will get 5000 net, and then I put a little after that, before tax – 6,500 or whatever the, the before tax number is. But I always want to lead with what's the simplest answer I can give them. The very yes. simplest answer is you can retire with $5,000 a month in your pocket. Like that's what will get deposited into your bank account each month. Is that okay with you? And if we're okay there, then as needed, that's where we go into guardrails. That's where we go into buckets to say, hey, here's how we came up with this number. Here's how we're yeah. going to make sure it works. But we always lead with the simplest thing, not the most complicated thing. 
And a real life example of, of why this matters, and I know our advisor audience gets this, Jarvis, but just to kind of bring it home, again, these, these clients that I'm, I'm going to be meeting with when I first met with them, they were just coming in to, to check things. They wanted to make sure they'd got nothing missed. They wanted to make sure they were getting the most out of their retirement. But they said, Mike, our retirement's a breeze. I was like, well, then fantastic. I'm super excited about that for you guys. They said, yeah, we won't even have to touch our investments. I was like, oh my gosh, you guys have it made. Tell me more about that. And they start talking about how much a month they want to spend. It's about $8,000 a month or so uh, in spendable income, so net income. And it was like, fantastic. Where's that come from? He's like, well, my pension is 3000 plus I get an extra 1500 plus her pension is $2,000 a month. And I was like, well, outstanding, right? I mean, kind of quick math, that's $6,500 a month. Um, they're like, yeah, then we get social security on top of that. And so that'll be another $4,000 a month in social security. So now they're at 10, five, right? And so they're at 10, five. And they're like, yeah, this is even more money than we wanted to spend. So we're excited. And so mentally, they're already spending $10,500 oh, a month. No. Oh, no, is right, right? Because what did they do? They took the report that they got from their HR, and it said, this is your gross monthly benefit. They said, sweet, this is my monthly benefit, right? And now they started to pre-spend in their mind how much a month that was. And of course, we all know this is the difference in gross versus net. And with a federal pension, we got taxes, we got health insurance, we got life insurance, potential long-term care is coming out, things, survivor benefits is coming out. So you're not getting that full dollar amount, right? It could be half. It could be half as much as what you think you're going to get. Um, and so so this is really the, the importance of giving these net numbers. But then Jarvis, we also need a way, instead of just saying it, we got to be able to show our clients, what does that net number really mean? And then how does it change over time? And I think where advisors go wrong, and I love your insight into this, back when I used to run big financial plans, and I used to use Money Guide Pro, and print all these, people would always start looking at these 30, 40 year projections and they start looking at the inflated numbers, right? And then their mind is like blown away because their $10,000 a month is now $78,000 a month, yep. right? This huge or number. Or zero. Or, or zero. zero next week. Yeah. Yeah. Or zero next week. Somewhere, that, that's somewhere in between there. Yeah. Yeah, but so so one of the things that we always do is we always limit the time period whenever we're looking at this to a known close time period, near time period, so clients can understand this money, because markets and inflation will kind of take care of itself if we do our job right. Micah, when the client, the prospect came in and they had what I'm going to call an egregious misunderstanding of their finances, right? So they're they're expecting ten thousand a month. Now, if they've got ten thousand dollars a month of income lined up, they were very successful in their careers. This wasn't the janitor yes. at at the the local whatever, right? These are very smart people. So they come in, they say, "Oh, I'm going to get ten thousand. And for our listeners, this isn't about the ten thousand. It's about when someone comes in with an egregious misunderstanding of their finances. Yes. How did you bridge that gap? How did you make them aware that hey, you're really missing this without insulting them? Well, one option could be, hey, I'm so glad you came in today into my infinite wisdom, and I'm going to set you right on your path, right? You could take the, that, that approach, which I have seen people do. Yeah, um, could work. Could work. Yep. It's not exactly what I would recommend. Um, one of the things is, as soon as I see that, I write a note down in my homework sheet that I have to address it, right? And so before they leave the meeting today, I have to address that. But then, Jarvis, I want to address it at the right time. I don't want to mm -hmm. jump on them when they've made a misstatement about something, because now all of a sudden I'm training a bad behavior that anytime they say something, they're going to uh, risk being wrong, uh, which is always the case. But anyways, they're going to risk being wrong, and then they're going to be made fun of it, right? Especially if if it's a guy, right? Be sexist here. If the guy gets embarrassed in front of his wife, I'll, I'll take me. I don't like being embarrassed, yep. much less in front of my wife. I get real emotional about those things, right? So it's something I definitely have to work on and check. And that's the same thing that can happen with anyone. So I got to be careful in our conference room and how I bring that up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down on my homework sheet internally just to say, okay, I need to address this for today. And then I start exploring with them these numbers. I'm like, well, I'm sure you guys did your math right. Is it okay if we walk through these numbers to make sure we're all on the same page together? And they're going to say, it. yes, well, fantastic. Let's just take one of them, right? And one of the things I often say is, is saying, look, we can jump into the details and things, but it's really important that we stay in the same 10,000 foot view first, then we can start getting into details. And they're like, fantastic. So tell me about your pension. And I start walking through the numbers. And then on a sheet of paper with them, I start doing the math of what their pension is. And then now, we Michael, do just it out. Real quick, yeah, you're, you're on, like, on, like on a piece of paper with a pen. You're right. You're not, paper. Not, you don't have like Money Guide Pro pulled up. You're not typing it in your computer, hoping the internet doesn't flits out on you. No, because let's keep in mind, right? We're, we're talking second grade. Well, I don't know what they do in public school these days. It's probably uh, algebra. No, it's probably college level <laughs> math. Right, but anyways, right. it should be second grade math Common that we're core. teaching. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, I mean, with a federal pension, <clears throat> you have a years of service times 1% 
times their high three. This isn't very complex. And so a lot of these numbers, I'm going to round and I just tell them I'm rounding because it makes my life easier. And I'm going to walk through what their pension is. So they have 30 years of service. That's 30%. Make a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's 30 grand divided by 12, 2,500 bucks, right? These are, there aren't big numbers I'm working with. So I'm going to walk them through in Jarvis. I don't go that fast, right? I'm going to slow it down one step no, at a no. time with clients. Yep. And then I'm going to say, great news. This is your gross number. And remember, gross is what the IRS likes. Just like in your paycheck, you don't get your gross, you get your net. So every two weeks, your net paycheck is what shows up in your bank account. They're like, that's right. And so it's great. So what deductions are going to come out of this $2,500 a month? And I start have them go through and list it, right? And now what have I done here? Now, I could have shortchanged this conversation, and I could have saved by 15 minutes of just giving them the right answer. But now they're bought into the number. Numbers, and now they have been right. So instead of me coming in as this giant expert and saying, you're wrong about these numbers, I'm having them walk me through it. And I'm going through it one step at a time with them. Now they get to show their expertise. Now they don't get embarrassed about it. Then they come to the revelation, a revelation that says, aha, I'm not actually getting $2,500 a month. I'm actually getting $1,750. Ooh, we better fill that gap. This is great. Great news. I'm glad we discovered that today. And we can put a plan in place to make sure you still have your desired $8,000 a month in retirement income. I love it. I love it. I, I, I want to highlight for some of our listeners, um, for our experienced listeners, it's interesting, Mike, you and I have had the opportunity now to speak with thousands of advisors through the podcast, through the Perfect RAA. And when I meet with experienced, successful advisors, I'm going to define success as advisors delivering massive value to a lot of clients. They all say that's that's perfect. That's brilliant. That's exactly how to articulate. When we talk to younger advisors that have like four clients, they say, yes. no, 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 no. You're way off. What this, there's this technical strategy here. And what I, there seems to be this divide. And I think it's really what, what separates advisors who deliver massive value from advisors who aren't yet there. The ones who deliver massive value, they realize that it's all about the communication. The technical knowledge is important. You have to have that foundation. It's all about how you articulate that. The whole thing about, oh, I'm going to note down to talk about net versus gross later in the discussion so they don't get defensive. That is earth-breaking stuff, and it's easy to yes. dismiss that and say, well, that's not really important. That's not on the CFP exam. It's not on my CFP. It's everything. It's everything. And on universally, advisors who get that have lots of clients to whom they deliver massive value. The advisors that don't get that troll social media and say, hey, you should be worried about this technical stuff instead. Well, you know, it's it's – uh, Pareto's law, right? So it's just one of those things that's there. It's yes. the 80 20, right? 20% of advisors get it. Therefore, we have 80% of the clients. Um, and that's just kind of how that math is, is going to work out. But Jarvis, you're, you're just spot on. The communication with the client is key in leading them through that discussion as to why it's valuable for them. Because one of the things that I'm going with this, and, and I know you've picked up on this as well, but when they leave my conference room, I want them to have confidence in how they got to those numbers. Now, they will not remember how I went through every single step. They're, they're not going to, right? Because no, I do this every no. single day. But they will remember that we went through it together and that none of it was a black box. I didn't go and say, you've been working for 30 years, therefore your pension seventeen fifty a month. Now they're going to go home and say, well, it's seventeen fifty a month, but that doesn't make any sense because HR said I'd get 2500 And where did these, right? And they're, they're going to be confused. But when I walk through one line item at a time with them, and again, I'm not using HR reports that are seven pages on how their pension works. This is a one pager. I'm handwriting with them. If they were virtual, I would share my screen. I would do the exact same thing. I write down with them so they are part of the experience in creating this. Now, when they come back later with questions, they always come back with, would you remind me how this works, right? Mm -hmm. But because they know the number was right, but they never question They never question how I got to the number. They're just like, can you remind me of those details? And that's a huge difference that's going to be there because now I'm not fighting with them in the future about something they heard from the water cooler or they heard from HR. Boy, I love that. And the, the key here is that when they leave your office or every time they meet with you, they think, I understood this better. I'm more comfortable with my retirement now yes. or whatever financial issue than I was before I called. Because there's not, as Mike, as much technical knowledge as you have, there's nothing that you know that's not available in Google it's somewhere deep in the archives. Like They could read the tax code. They could pull yep. up the OPM manual. They're not going to, but they could. But it's your ability to communicate it. Now, I'm curious, Mike, when that prospect came in and said, hey, I'm totally good on my fixed income sources. I don't need to touch my investments. Was there any trigger of head trash, even momentarily, of how am I going to deliver value here? Or you've heard this one so many times, you're like, oh, yeah, everybody thinks this. 
There so would have been years ago. There absolutely would have been. Um, but I, I have, I've been blessed. And now I look at it with different lens that says if a yes. client or a prospect comes in and I can add value, I'm going to be so elated that I met with them and they've done such a fantastic job. And I might pitch them to see if they want to become a financial planner. Right. I mean, that's how I approach this. I would love sure. to learn new things. And I do all the time. Right. I love that aspect of it. So if they come in with something that I haven't done, that they got everything figured out, et cetera. Now, the reality is, and I, I had this and I think we talked about on a previous podcast, but had a, a relatively large client, about $8 million and change come in, which for me is really big, um, yeah. both retired federal employees. And they were, you know, very, very smart, top of their careers, both retired. And they came in saying, I know all of these things. And it's like, well, why did you come in? But they were like, I already know all these things. And as we started going through and discover some of the basic things they've completely missed, they're being absolutely killed in taxes because they missed very simple gifting strategies that we can do. Uh, they missed QCDs, right? Simple things that you and I would see. So even with those clients that are really good, the, the reality is we have such a breadth and a depth of knowledge for retirees. It is really, really hard for the average person to put all of those pieces together where we can't add some value. Doesn't mean they're not going to be ideal clients all the time, but we can add value. So, uh, made me think I had a, a prospect that's becoming a client right now that referred to me by an existing client. I get on the phone with this guy, this prospect, and he says, Jarvis, actually, you know, I've read like every book there is on retirement planning, like every book there is. Love I'm it. a retired engineer. I'm writing uh, options on my Coca-Cola stock, just like Warren Buffett. Like he's going through this whole thing, really kind of just, I could tell, again, this is professional. I could tell he was posturing. I said, that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Why, you know, could you help me understand why you're, you're here today? And he says, well, I missed one thing. Well, you missed more than one, but let's go. He had missed the Irma tax, and so yeah. he got hit by that. <clears throat> and so he says, well, I'll tell you what, could we meet and just talk about Irma? And I said, you know what, we'll focus on the Irma. I'm going to always do my full financial planning because that's how I do things. But I did have some head trash going into that. Mike. I said, boy, this guy, he's, sure. he's read everything, right? He claims to have read everything. Now, of course, the first thing when he comes in my office, he sees my library there, and he says to Colleen, my office manager says, that's a lot of books. And Colleen says, that? Oh, that's just the ones that Matt keeps up front. You should see the rest of his library, right? So right away, he's establishing credibility. But I had that head trash for a minute. Hey, there's no value. But we sit down. There was an immense amount of value to deliver. Turns out he wasn't just missing one thing. He was missing dozens of things. But again, to your point, I, I sincerely complimented what he had accomplished. He had saved up millions of dollars with my heart of hearts, sincerely complimented him. He had Fantastic. had a great career, but there was blind spots he had. And I was able, just like you were, hey, let's look at a couple of things that you might not be considering because lots of people miss them. Not just you, lots of people miss them. And you brought up a really key thing, Jarvis, I'd love to pull out here, the importance of doing a Please. full financial plan, because sometimes clients, and that will be mm -hmm. these ones particularly, they came in, um, the ones I was just talking about, they had come in just to learn X about taxes. And I says, no, 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 this isn't how it works. We do whole financial planning. Taxes, great news is taxes are a part of it. But if a client doesn't want to do that, right, and again, saying, hey, if we want to focus on Irma, we want to focus on taxes, I'm all about it, oh, but sure. I got to look at the entire piece. Uh, the entire pie. And if the answer is no, I don't get a look at the entire pie, then the answer is no, you don't become a client. And I tell them, I says, look, I quite frankly, I think it's malpractice. We have five areas of financial planning in our world, estate yeah. planning, risk management, retirement income, investments, and taxes. Those are the five. And if we don't cover all five, then I'm not doing my job. Now, if we go to risk management, or estate planning, you got everything done. Well, fantastic. It'll be a 15 minute conversation. We'll check the box. I appreciate your patience. We'll move on to the next thing, but I have to go through these things. I love it. I love it. Well, Mike, and I, we've kind of covered all these other angles. Let's see if we can steer back to the retirement income timeline yes. value add piece it, itself. It's funny, Mike and I, we, we script these um, or we outline these webinars and podcasts out beforehand. And then we go to get really excited about all these different avenues. But one of the value adds that you use really almost in every meeting, but certainly with every prospect, is your retirement income timeline. Walk us through just a little bit. And this ties, by the way, to everything we've been talking about. Let's look a little bit deeper at this piece. Yeah. So the creation of this was really is, you know, it was getting to the point where, you know, I liked Money Guide Pro that you could see different sources of income were coming in. Right. But it was too complex for my clients. Um, you know, I really couldn't explain it down on a one pager where all it was. But I liked some of that. So it's like, OK, Gary, what do I do with this element of it? And then I get questions from clients that I could see in my mind that says, OK, they want eight thousand dollars a month, but they have uh, a pension. 
they have a supplement with SOPS. Then we have Social Security, right? We have this gap in time. Most of my clients are coming to me about 55, 57. And so we have a gap in time before Social Security, potentially, what, 13, 15 years? And so we need to say, when are we going to turn that Social Security on, et cetera? And I wanted a simple one pager that I could show them what the plan was. And then also, Jarvis, I wanted them to get more confidence in their retirement. Because a lot of my clients, federal retirees, they're <clears throat> very uneasy, right? They, they went to a federal job because they like the stability. They like the consistency of it. And now we're asking them to move into an uncharted waters. For them, it's uncharted. Yes. And so really, it says, how do we do this? And so there's a couple things that we put together. One of them was the retirement income timeline, which is only a 10-year snapshot of the next 10 years where their income is going to come from. At the very top, <clears throat> it says gross, I'm sorry, net income, monthly income. So $8,000 a month. That's how much take home income they want to have. Fantastic. Then in a stackable bar chart fashion underneath that, we're going to show where all of their fixed income is coming from. That's their pension, their military income, their disability, VA disability from military side. Social security income, et cetera. And it's color coordinated, blue and pink, right? So we can see guys and gals, right? How is that income coming over time? And what I love about this is it's going to show great $8,000 a month, but it's going to show, okay, their fixed income is only $4,500 a month. Now, keep in mind, their fixed income is only the net fixed income they're getting, not the gross, because what do I care about? I care about the net income. So now they can see, oh my gosh, there's a $3,500 a month gap in where I want to be. And now we can say, okay, great news. This is where your income is going to be in the next 10 years. But now we have a piece that shows perfectly with the buckets about how are we going to fill that gap for the next 10 years? I got to fill $3,500 a month. Fantastic. What's my investment plan? And now I can go over the investment plan with them, simple one pager on buckets, which really outlines how these come together. Clients like the piece. They take it home with them. That's how I mm -hmm. dub that they like it. Yep. Um, they get to see where that income comes from. And it's always our counterbalance track. I, I don't know about you, Jarvis, but every now and again, I have head trash that says, holy crap, we're taking out an 8% distribution for a client uh, because we're choosing to delay Social Security. And is this really a good idea? Then I'm like, oh, wait, no, this is a great idea, right? So it's a good piece for advisors as well. It says, no, this is the plan that we have. Well, of course, for our Backstage Pass and Invictus members, you can see copies of that. Right? They're all inside, not, not just like templates, but the real ones that we've done, or Michael, that you've done. It's, it's essential here, though, that the client has a one pager that they can go back to because you've just thrown, even just on this podcast, you've thrown out a bunch of different numbers and they track in your mind because this yes. is what you do all day. For the clients, all they heard was marshmallow, marshmallow, marshmallow. Yes. But when they can also visually see it, when you're pointing to it, when they can hold it in your hand, that way you're counting, covering all the learning styles, then we can go back to that. And when the client says, Michael, when you said 3,500, what did that mean? Now you can go back and point and say, oh, well, see right here, this line in year three, this 3,500 turn on again it's it's all these things that helps them understand for us it's abundantly clear for the client this is no disrespect to clients that's why they're here seeing us it's an absolute mystery and really everything you say on top of that just makes it more mysterious not in a good way not like a sexy mysterious yeah, like yeah a, where, where yeah. am I going mysterious in an oh crap way yeah <clears throat> and Jarvis I don't know if this has ever yeah. happened to you with some of your clients as well but sometimes we'll say hey eight thousand dollars a month is your retirement income we'll do all this planning they'll say hey when you're 70 years old, we're going to turn around your social security and it'll be $3,000 a month. Sometimes what do clients think? Do they think their income is going to stay at eight grand? No, they think it's going to 11, right? And maybe that wasn't the plan. Maybe the plan was their income was going to come down because we were accelerating more distributions out of their TSP account now to balance out that cash flow for them. But now they think their income is going to be at $11,000 a month. That's another benefit of this piece. They get to see that their cash flow stays the same. Where it's coming from is changing a little bit over time. But their monthly cash flow is very, very consistent. Mike, another thing that comes up with this shorter 10-year time horizon is that, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but we're leaving off any kind of <clears throat> inflation numbers, time value of yes. money, uh, anything like that, because it confuses the clients. Now, even right now in a period of high inflation, it's just it's a hard concept for people to comprehend. And so, uh, like you mentioned, hey, when I hit 70, my Social Security comes on. It doesn't mean I'm going to go to 11,000. It means we're going to not take as much from the nest egg. If I start showing them that, hey, we're going to go from 8,000 to 8,800 to 9,600, they're going to, in their mind, think, oh, I'm going to have all this extra money. It just confuses the issue. So we always want to yes. back out any issues that we don't have to articulate. If a client asks about inflation, I'll say, great news. We're going to adjust for inflation as it happens. But to keep this illustration simple, the same reason we round the numbers, we're just going to leave that off to the side for now. 
Exactly. Right. The same reason we round the numbers. Right. And that's the other thing I want to get into. One of the things I love about rounding the numbers is sometimes I'll have my engineers that will come in. Says, well, Micah, my pension's not 1750. It's 17357. Can can you update that? (laughs) Absolutely not. Right. For three dollars and fifty seven cents, we're going to round to the lowest nearest dollar amount. That's where we're going with this thing, Uh, because it just makes it super easy. It makes it a little bit more consistent. Now, Mike, a question that we're going to get in because we get lots of questions after these episodes, which is a lot of fun, is, all right, where do I get access to a retirement income timeline? Like, which piece of software are you using? And actually, unfortunately, you have some bad news here, I think. Well, great news for me. Uh, bad news for our audience, unfortunately, yeah. right now. Uh, this is a custom-built software. So uh, I have tried many different out-of-the-box solutions. I haven't found anything that does this in the same way. And so we have built out our own custom solution. So that's what we have today. Yeah. So I, and the reason I mentioned that is not to like this takeaway tease. It's very difficult to have tools that deliver massive value, but don't be alarmed with that. You could simply use Excel. You could use a word document and call them this out. It doesn't have to come out of a piece of software. What it has to be is clear and concise. Yes. You can do like Mike and I've done and thrown obscene amounts of money at custom software development. Um, or you can say, great, how do I just draw this out on a piece of paper? How do I put this in a Word document, an Excel document? So don't let the technology stop mm-hmm. you from insisting on massive value. No, uh, we used Excel for a very long time before we, we built it all into our CRM. So Jarvis, another thing that I want to point out real uh, right here that's really important with this retirement yes. income timeline. Now, again, most of my clients are coming to me pre-retirees, so they haven't made the leap just yet. Yes. And again, some of them are very apprehensive about making that leap. They have a lot of consistency. You know, and a lot of times a mental, emotional bandwidth is taken up inside of work in a good way, right? They have a purpose. They have a job. They're important at their work right now. I'm going to retire into something else. We have those emotions going on. But we also have the financial side. Where's their money going to come from? So one of the things that I love to do with retirement income timeline is when we're two years out before retirement, I love to start living off our retirement dollars. And I'll actually re-divert, I think we talked about this on another podcast, but I'll actually re-divert their entire paycheck into a Schwab account. And then I will have Schwab pay them out how their pensions would be paid out. Like if they're going to get 3000 from their pension and 4000 from investments, I'm going to have a $3,000 deposit and a $4,000 deposit, not on the same day. Why? Because that's what retirement's going to be like. And I want to simulate that as much as I possibly can with clients. And then they're really going to know, especially for those clients. And forgive me, I'm just getting all preachy. I know you get this, yeah, I love especially it. for those clients that are like, you know what, Mike, I'm making 10 grand a month now. I know as soon as I retire, it'll go down to 7,000. Not a problem. <laughs> We're like, can you save three now? Well, no, 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 that's different. No, no, I'm no, still no. working. So I need to spend that. Right. And it's like, well, fantastic. Well, then prove it. Right. Let's live on our retirement dollars. And I've found, Jarvis, that's actually a better solution than just saving the delta. So if someone's making 10 grand a month and they're going to go to seven, having them save $3,000 a month has been more problematic and less simulating retirement versus transferring 100% of their net pay into a Schwab account. Then from that Schwab account, them getting their retirement payments, mentally, that is a huge difference for them. And they're like, oh, crap, now this is really retirement. And what's super exciting is then they're like, this is doable. I, I, I can do it. I can actually retire. And so we can really help check out that emotional box. Boy, this is an entire episode there, right? It's like great news. This way we can test retirement. And if it doesn't work, we can keep working, right? Versus once you give your notice, that's kind of the end. Yeah, right. there's there's uh, there's so many pieces in here. Well, Micah, this podcast is, of course, all about taking action. Uh, I feel like we've left all these like loose ends. This is like a, a teaser for the entire trailer. Get great news, though. The podcast will continue week after week. We've done a lot of recordings on this subject, but what are some action items that come to mind for advisors listening, right? What are some things that they can implement today other than starting a whole custom software build? What are, what are things that you would recommend? I would not recommend going down the custom software route. Um, yeah, I don't even want to talk about how much money I just burned. Uh, but besides that, um, I'm going to say client expectations. This is the most important thing is consistently setting and resetting client expectations, and especially when it comes to retirement. How do we sample retirement first? How do we show them what it's going to be? How are consistent and simple thing on client expectations? How consistent are you in your process of explaining things? My clients will tell me I'm very consistent regardless of the topic. I'm going to start the same way. I started a 30,000 foot view and say, let's come down together. Let's step back. Let's talk about our goals. Let's make sure we're consistent. Okay, is this still where we want to go? 
Now I start dialing down into their answer. Almost regardless of their question, I answer it the same way. This consistency really helps set those client expectations. They know what they're going to get, right? And again, I'm not, and I really love this from my aspect of it because I don't get to be wrong. So the first thing I do is I say, set your goals. They're setting their goals, not me. And it says, if this is your goal, then this is how we need to get there. Now, if this isn't your goal, well, great news. Now I'm going to have a different answer. So we're always resetting those. So setting, resetting client expectations is, is just a must. We got to keep doing. I love it. Uh, action item number two, there is no financial concept that cannot be illustrated with a pen and a piece of paper. And, and not, that does not mean that you don't need more intense things. It doesn't mean that you don't need more intense calculators, more intense projections, more intense analysis. That's all fine and dandy. Every financial concept can be articulated on a piece of paper with a single colored pen or crayon. And to practice, your action item is to practice this. So whatever you're going to present to a client or prospect, sit down with your assistant, sit down with your spouse, sit down with your teenage child and draw it out on a piece of paper and say, hey, you know, does this make sense to you? And if they, what, if or when they say no, remember that's on you for not articulating it clearly, right? Anytime you, you're talking with a client and they have kind of that hazy look in their eyes, like I, I really have no idea what you're talking about, that's on you. It's not on them. You stop and say, I'm not articulating that very clearly. You can either figure it out or you can adopt. Our good friend Michael Henley says, I'd rather copy genius than invent mediocrity, which is why you're here. Um, find someone who's articulating that, right? If you're working with retirees, all right, who's been able to articulate that clearly? How do I duplicate their success? I love it. You know, Jarvis, and one of the things, too, is when you said that about that, you know, we don't need fancy computers, et cetera. Keep in mind that our industry didn't have fancy computers until, what, 05, right? Sure, we could say in the 90s yeah. there was like DOS programs. <clears throat> Excuse me, there was a couple other programs out there in DOS that you could run and generate kind of reports, et cetera. But we didn't have this type of stuff in the industry. So the pioneers in, inside of this, they all had to do it on one page and they had to draw it out. They didn't have computers yep. to do any of this stuff. So clearly that was capable of being done. And things are not more complex now than it was then. It's still the same things that we're having to solve for. I love it. I love it. Well, Micah, thanks for taking time to, to let us dive into your retirement income timeline. To all of our listeners, thank you so much for being here. And until next time, happy planning. Happy planning. Information designed to change lives. Financial planning can make you thrive. Start today, don't think twice.